Jackson. Leave it to this show. Leave it to this show. There you go. To, you know, give us some wonderful heartfelt moments right before ripping our hearts right back out again. We're talking about Cam Camp, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Just want to be sure. It, it we will you, be talking about Cam Camp at the end for a little bit. It but. teaches you the true meaning of Christmas and then tries to shoot you in the eye with a beep again. It's <laughs> awful. That's why I wear the glasses. <laughs> oh, no. These are for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hey there, Rooster Teeth fans. Welcome to another episode of the Ruby After Show. Tonight, we are talking about Alone Together. Let's not waste any time. Let me introduce my fantastic panel. To my left, Mark Donica. Hi, I'm the internet's Mark B. Donica. You can find me on Twitter at Mark B. Donica. To my left is Stacey Shuttleworth. Hey, guys. I'm Stacey Shuttleworth. You can find me on at Twitter, Instagram, all over the web at Stacey Shuttles. <laughs> oh, you're back. And to you heard that. <laughs> Hi, all my buddies. I'm Katie Cullen. You can follow me all over the social medias at Kiaxe. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. And to my roundabout left. I'm Megan Salinas. You guys can tweet at me at the Mengwin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. Sadly, Patrick could not be here with us tonight, but you guys can tweet him your well wishes at P to the D's on Twitter. And we are going to be keeping an eye on the hashtag RWBYABTV uh, for all of you guys watching live. Katie and Mark and Stacy. Have- We're around. <laughs> you all have the live chat covered. We've got miniature libraries of Alexandria in our pocket. You expect us not to use them. We're going to use them. The chat's always such a good time. The information superhighway in the palm of your hand. I don't know why you're surprised that we all have chat open. You have chat? Chat's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) No, just... Oh no, it's hour. okay. It's okay. Usually, I mean, at the moment, net neutrality is still a thing. Nobody has knocked down moment, our beacon tower, so we can moment. still get all our internet. Right, the FCC. Please, <laughs> get it in please, you can. please, for the love of God. <laughs> anyway, neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> if you guys uh, have been watching, you know that we love this show. And again, it's fantastic when when it decides to get all warm and fuzzy, but it's also really mean sometimes, guys. And sometimes it just really wants to break our hearts. So, um, let's go around the table. Let's start with Katie. How do you feel after this episode? <laughs> this is one of the best examples of be careful what you wish for <laughs> that I've seen in media for a very long time. Because people have definitely been asking for certain things for this show, and this episode definitely gave us at least one of them. And because I only watched it for the first time yesterday, I know I missed the initial fan reaction, and I'm a little disappointed at myself for that, but yeah. Discussion o'clock up in here. Yep, Mm -hmm. definitely. Stacy. Cliffhangers. Tragedies. Just fear <laughs> tragedies. I don't do all the cliffhangers. Guys. It's just you need that time. closure. It's Aren't you a sponsor? God. Yeah. Yes. That's worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We pay for the pain. I waited longer. No. The pain. Pain for pain. I pay for this pain. Man. I love, pain it. I love emotions you're going both, on. You're both skating on thin ice. <laughs> Watch yourselves. Mark? Uh, well, first of all, Mecca Soundway of Inchat says, Who hurt you, Maz, Carrie, and Gray? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a quote. Inquiring uh, that, That's not my comment. That's theirs. <laughs> um, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I was not feeling this episode. Really? Yeah. I, uh, there, there's get couple, out! There's a couple of things that I hope uh, get a little bit more time uh, to flourish when it comes to certain stories, certain branches of... Uh, certain things and I'm going to allude to them I'm not I'm I, I don't feel like this was a failure on on any side of, of the production whatsoever this is something that didn't work for me and it probably worked for a lot more people clearly so so this this um, just what didn't knock it out of the park for me that's bound to happen and that's fine um, but yeah. u- ultimately um, it was very mean how, how they ended it <laughs> uh, and, and yeah so, okay, to kind of go off of that, I'm very surprised by your answer mm. because one of the things we've talked about um, on this panel before in the past is how Weiss is like your favorite character in Ruby last season. I didn't mention Weiss, <laughs> did I? <laughs> no, you didn't. But she had an extra, like, she had an all star moment in this episode. Totally so, agree. Uh, <laughs> to kind of go off of that, what were your feelings on, like, Weiss's development in this episode and uh, how she was portrayed? This continued to, to further my. Uh, how much I have enjoyed Weiss's journey, and and in some respect, Kara's journey uh, as an actor and as a performer. Uh, this. Uh, we wanted to learn more about Mama Schnee, and we did. 
Uh, yeah, well, there... I love that our ridiculous jokes were canon. Yep. In just the worst possible way. Glug, glug, Sometimes you glug. don't want to be validated. <laughs> like, I wanted to be right, but not like this. Not we're like, oh, yes, like her mother's this. drinking in the garden. And now it's like, oh, God, her mother's drinking yeah, in the garden. Not like mm. this. <laughs> not like this. Had to do the, the, oh, I forgot her name. Nurse uh, Joy. No, for, no, I'm talking from The Matrix. Oh. Not like this. Oh, um, and then she Trinity. gets disconnected. Switch? So, yeah, I think it was Switch. Switch, because oh, it wasn't Apoc, because that was the dude with, like, the matter, Miranda hair. Doesn't matter, she's dead. Yeah, matter, she's dead. Yes, Yikes. like that. Um, but wow. uh, I, I agree voice. with uh, uh, Equal Hudson in chat. Weiss is the best mom. Aw. Yeah. For mm -hmm. sure. How about, uh, how about Stacy? Um, yeah, like, we had this very heartfelt, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Yang and Weiss. What were your feelings on that? I adored it. I mean, I love it when, because... A lot of times, especially with like ensemble groups, you get very strong connections formed between like very specific pairs or trios sometimes, and you never get to see like the whole group really kind of mesh together. So being able to watch it with Ruby as they all kind of grow closer together instead of just because it was, you know, uh, Ruby and Weiss were the partners, so they got closer faster, and it was mostly interaction with them. So now to see that that has branched out and to see kind of the fruits of, yeah, they all spent a lot of time together. This is a group effort, not necessarily just focusing on, on you know, the twosomes anymore. So, so lovely. Yeah, and the, you and I aren't as close, but I'm still here for you. Like, Aww. Yes. Mm -hmm. Aww. Um, I really appreciated this because it highlighted something that I think literally everybody can relate to, and that's Weiss illuminating the idea of, like, you're right. I don't know loneliness like you do. I have my own version of it. Mm -hmm. You know, every man is an island unto himself. You know, we're all alone in our own way, guys. <laughs> but maybe together we can be alone together through the bonds of friendship. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if Mark's sold on that. <laughs> have to try a little harder. There's so many contradictions. <laughs> the episode's literally called, called Alone, Alone Together. Together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I really liked I, I really liked seeing them come together uh, because, like, yeah, I don't understand necessarily what you went through, but I suffered, you know, loneliness in my own way, and I can connect to you and empathize with you because of that. Mm. So I really, I really appreciate these two getting time to kind of hash this out. I do want to bring up that it makes Ruby's reaction to when uh, Yang initially showed up, it puts that in an entirely new perspective because if you looked at her, she looked so guilty and afraid. She looked like a little girl, you know, standing in front of her sister. And now we kind of know why. It's because Yang doesn't take to abandonment very well. Her mother abandoned her. I mean, mother of the year, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mother abandoned her. Dad did his best to be around, but couldn't be around all the time. And then Blake left. Ruby must have felt so guilty about leaving, too. I think there's plenty of guilt and shame to share amongst yeah. all of them and, and how much it let they let it take over and control them, we're still learning as as they reconvene. Well and Weiss being able to see things from Blake's point of view where if you look back at the start of the series, they were on such opposite ends of the scale. Mm -hmm. And now she can sit down and say, no, this is what happened. This is from her point of view, yeah, you miss her, but she's also really freaked out. Yeah, it's with looking at this, I, I really appreciated that insight, too, because, yeah, if you remember back in season one, Weiss was the one that was butting heads with Blake, you know, because mm -hmm. of her her family heritage and because of her views on the faunus and everything like that. They were the ones butting heads. So it was really refreshing to see this perspective from her to be like, well, yeah. Of course she's going to run away. Her worst fear came true. Like, you don't get over that very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it really so surprising that somebody who her default uh, <laughs> resolution uh, to problems is running away from them ran away when a problem came? Is it really that far-fetched? Nope. And she brought it. She brought it up herself in earlier seasons, where her semblance, her semblance is for her to run away, is, is this, to leave a shadow of herself in her, in her place. 
the, I mean, as we've learned with other people's semblances, it's it's tied to you in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's inherent. Yeah, and, and you, she's become so convinced of that too that that is just part of her. Part of her is you know fleeing when things get too tough. So breaking that is is not no easy task. Yeah. I, I like that, too, because her absence does cast a shadow on the rest of the group. It's wonderful that they're all back together again, but because of that missing piece, you know, there is this there is this darkness there, too, without her. So, yeah, I, I very much appreciated this, this whole, just this whole thing. I, it's, like I said, it's nice to see them together, but the 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 puzzle piece isn't complete yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And may I say they're all switching roles uh, to the point where uh, if if you show me this episode and say who do you think they call Ice Queen? Oh. I wouldn't say Weiss. I'd say Yang. And I think her experiences with her mom have have left her in a state of being frozen in place. To if you excuse the the expression, but. It, it, she was so, she seemed so unfeeling and so disconnected from from this conversation that it was kind of hard to empathize with her and 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 Weiss coming through and being like yo let me warm your heart Aww. with with my own way that that is where i think the the strength in in the team lies is is not the commiserating when we're feeling sad for ourselves but the the rebuilding with the help of another well, and chat's been pointing out, going as far back as the yellow trailer, Yang has been looking for her mom. And you don't really think about, oh my god, yeah, it's been that long. She finally found her, and she's just as big a disappointment as everyone said she would be. Oh. Like Again, we keep going back to Raven, mom of the year, who mm-hmm. spent that entire conversation manipulating her daughter. So, yeah, she's finally found her mom. Great. I think... Potentially, the the most upsetting thing about where Yang is at, emotionally speaking, right now is, you know that moment where, in a moment of, like, frustration or anger or sleep deprivation, you do something that reminds you a ton of your parents when they are frustrated with you? <laughs> Um, like, I definitely have those moments in particular where I'm like, oh my god, that's what my mom would have done. Um, and I worry about Yang, uh, and this emotional coldness, and the way, as, as we mentioned a lot in the last episode, she's probably being set up for disappointment. Looking at how she is sort of unforgiving towards Blake right now for having left, I worry about kind of Yang becoming her mom in a way of like, oh, this person's not in my life anymore. I'm going to cut them out. They were family, but I'm going to cut them out because they didn't see eye to eye with me right now. What are the... Do, <laughs> does anybody else feel like she's in danger of becoming her mom? I think that's definitely plausible at this point, especially because... Um, and there's one one thing that she says that really struck me, too. Um, she's in a very selfish place. Uh, and Because I think she does understand why Blake ran away. But... Um, and I wouldn't call it necessarily selfish because it is, it's an emotional need that she expresses when she says, well, what if I needed her here for me, mm-hmm. for her sake? Um, so I think, yeah, a lot of that support system was ripped really, like, just suddenly away from her, but, you know, her sister, her best friends, and then she is going to rekindle this relationship with her mother and... That is no relationship that she is there to rekindle. So I think she does have this very alone, closed off sense. Well, and if you look at it, with the, with the exception of Weiss, Blake and Ruby, you know, they, they, the way they moved forward was very much by taking action. Yeah, Blake ran away, but she ran to go home. And Ruby went on the road in order to accomplish something. They both were dealing with the emotional trauma by doing something. Yang didn't necessarily have that opportunity because she had to stay and recover. And then at that point didn't have, I guess, the fortitude to go and take action because she was still getting used to her life, you know, without an arm. So Did she have to be inactive? She chose to be inactive. She chose to be left alone, and as a result, the world advanced around her. So it's, she's got to be dealing with a, a whole bunch of guilt 
in imagine if she acted when everybody else did imagine if she went out with ruby you know what she probably wouldn't have found her mom but would have been something else something different yep well well, we've still got a lot to talk about as far as uh, the menagerie side of things goes. Does it, anybody else want to talk about anything else regarding Weiss, Ruby, and Yang in this episode? I.e., does anybody else want to stall while I look up iTunes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the coffee thing was adorable. It uh, was. Yes. Weiss knowing Ruby's coffee order and being like, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> it's not the first time she's gotten Ruby coffee. What is that? <laughs> I did. I, I very much appreciated that. And she's like, well, here's what coffee is for. And I was like, Weiss, you're a woman after my own heart. <laughs> you are absolutely <laughs> right about that. That is what coffee is for. <laughs> well, and I've, I've been thinking about it. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to put this into words very well but when someone is hurt when there's a disaster when there's a tragedy there's an idea of concentric circles and you comfort in and complain out so if there's someone who's hurt worse than you you try to comfort them but if there's someone who's more stable than you hey that's a person i can talk to when i have problems most of our characters right now are smack in the middle of this ring of circles and so anyone that they would go to that's on the outside is still right there with them. So it's hard to be, well, I needed Blake with me. What if I needed her? Well, she's also in smack in the middle circle with you. She's not in any fit state to help you. Or, again, just kind of, I I appreciate that because everybody is both healing and uh, in need of being helped, um, but also providing support. So I, I appreciate that. But as far as... Blake was concerned, you know, you also have to keep that in mind, too. If she had stayed, would Adam have done, you know, would the destruction he wrought have been even worse? So, in her mind, you you do have to give her credit. Of like, yeah, that was probably the best option for her. And at the same time, they have no idea what's going on in, in Menagerie. No. no whatsoever. Completely and the then, <laughs> on the opposite side of it, imagine if she had stayed and the guilt that Yang would have felt if Blake wasn't there for her family... While all this, was, While happening. this was happening. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, hey, they murdered my family, but how are you doing today? You know, sort of a thing. Can I get coffee? You don't drink coffee. I do now. It's bitter, like my life. Pull on Mama Black she. like my soul. Yeah. <laughs> and Irish up the coffee yeah. a little bit. Why sneezes? Bigger, like, this problems. is all familiar. <laughs> this all seems very familiar. Paula says, I think the thing to take away here is that Adam is the worst. Yes. yes. Well, yeah, sky blue, water wet. I feel I mean. like that's something that no matter how the fandom feels about anything else. Actually, uh, somebody did um, do a little Ruby fandom video of, like, what it's like entering the fandom. It's like, is there anything we can all agree on? Adam is garbage. Yeah! Adam is garbage yep. is like the person handing out flyers on the corner, but you take it and you look at it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't just throw it away immediately. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I can sign up for Greenpeace. Yeah. <laughs> like, Adam is a garbage fire and the sun is slightly warm. Like, yeah, I can donate. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> donate to Help Menagerie. <laughs> Anyway, guys, we want to talk to you guys really quickly about iTunes. Folks, thank you so much to everybody who's gone to iTunes to rate, subscribe, leave a comment. We love hearing from you, and it's the best way to let our producers know that you guys like the show that we're putting on. And it helps us remain searchable for anybody looking for rooster teeth oriented con- uh, content on the internet. So, uh-huh. if you do leave a comment on iTunes, you might even get a shout out on the show. Like right now. We got three <laughs> new comments from last week. Yay! Thank you, everybody. Um, this one, this one's a bit of a, of an essay, so, so stay with us. Uh, Killing Me Softly, five-star review from Tales Marvel Tailgate. Wait, after you, Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> after I opened up the bo- podcast app, I have fallen in love with Rooster Teeth reviews. They always give meaningful feedback Aww. on an episode with just enough puns and references to get me through hours of script writing. Plus, the interaction Ooh. with the live chat is tremendously appreciated. I have one theory to pass around the table. Ooh. I personally believe that John's semblance is the ability to reflect kinetic energy back at its sender. I know many people say that the card in punching John scene is due to aura, but in all of the cases we've seen with other people who have punched another person with their aura on, haven't been shown to be hurt from that punch, except for when Cardin punches Jean. Though I love the idea of Jean having polarity as a way to show the mentor's impact Aww. on the student, I really, it really doesn't seem likely to me. Thanks all, and keep up the good work. Sincerely, 
person in the background. I like that That's a good idea. Theory. Yeah. Hi, shadow person. Yeah. Uh, DJ Discordia, good show, five stars, because everybody knows the other the other stars are broken, so you have to leave five. <laughs> you have to uh, sometimes I'm late to watching the episodes, and these are great ways to keep up with Ruby. So yeah, producers, please keep the show going. I need these color-coded girls, hi, reviews. <laughs> So they're be, because they're so fun to listen to. Um, I fine for the case. I'll just not identify. Uh, Mark, you're one of the girls. It's okay. <laughs> I think they meant the color coded girls in the show. No, I'll take it. <laughs> I need compliments. I'll take that one. Um, don't tell my wife. My favorite non rooster teeth podcast from J- uh, Jacob Overturf, Jedi Neptune. The rest is cut off. Five star review. I've been listening to this podcast since I found Ruby around episode eight of volume one. Meeting you guys at RTX Austin this year was one of the highlights of my year. Uh, I love listening to the analysis and theories and adding my own twists and adding them with adding them with adding to them with my friends. Keep being awesome, people. Shout out. Uh, thank you, everybody who left a review. Uh, please keep leaving them. And if you saw us at RTX, post those pictures again. Uh, uh, oh, thank yeah. you, and also thank you, Juliet, who uh, is uh, our engineer, who is reminding everybody that I am <laughs> the best yeah. girl. Mark is you best are best girl. girl. <laughs> to which I respond, "You must be kidding, aren't you?" Anyway, let's get back to the show. <laughs> The show. Let's get back to the show, huh? Again, can't say thank you guys enough. And yeah, going down to RTX and meeting you guys in person is like the highlight of my summer. So thank you guys. You're uh, the best. And just for danger in chat saying that I'm a magical girl, let me give you one of these. Hey! <laughs> if you're listening on Someone's going to gift the hell out of that, right? Please. 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 Just, Please. Just, put, just give me a transformation. I don't care. Uh, I would go If Mark Mars. wants to be a magical girl, I want to be a magical Wait, girl. You, Can I get another magical yo, girl? Business? Y'all were hold hosting up, the Sailor up. Moon show. You're fine. Okay. I'll be your little tiny animal mascot. Contract? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Wait, I think we, we changed. I think <laughs> we're jumping around here. We're jumping shows. Hold on. We gotta, yeah. we gotta bring it back to Menagerie. Um, so, back to Menagerie. Oh, there goes menagerie. Rabbit. Each other. What? Oh, so, there goes Adam. He don't. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Tuxedo, so, tuxedo Mark. Uh, I'll take that. Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> So, okay, let's get back to it, because uh, we have a very important component of this episode. I'm sorry, but something just reminded me in chat, while we have the most amount of people that we have right now, can we make an announcement? Yes! About next week's show? Yes! All right, so it's really, it's been really tough. Everybody's super busy. The, the, The production loop on the show is ridiculous, so it has been a lot more difficult for us to get guests, just because of how busy everybody is, and we totally understand that. However, next week... December 20th, we are going to be joined by the one, the only, Samantha Ireland. Hey! So do yourself a favor, you show up here, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, she'll be here to talk about Wolves Inside as well as Ruby. So please, don't be a stranger, make sure to show up. If you're excited to have her on the show, make sure to let her know that she is more than welcome. And uh, damn, have we missed her since talking to her at RTX. Exactly. And guys, again, if you haven't already done so, go and support her project, Wolves Inside. Please, I need it. So, let's talk about Menagerie. Uh, We have a very kind of important component of this episode to talk about, and that's mainly Lady Ilya. And I have always loved this character from the moment she was introduced. I love the character design. The actress behind her is doing a phenomenal job. Sounds like there's a button that sends. (laughs) There's not necessarily a but... But <laughs> really now, y'all, she's lying to us. She, she also, said there wasn't a but, and then she immediately. Everything before but is a lie. Yeah, there's two buts. There's two buts in that sentence. Two buts. You rebutted us. <laughs> uh, allow me to give a rebuttal. So that's what that means. Yep. You no longer get to be mad at me for making puns. Uh, yeah. For one, <laughs> can I that's finish a, a sentence, cut. ladies and ladies? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Dixie no more. Lady Ilya is the first canonical official lesbian character in the show, which I feel like, it, again, we kind of had a precursor to this at the very beginning of this season when we had um, still shots of same sex couples in background scenes, which I adored. And Lady Ilya being a canonical lesbian is a first for this show. Point of order. 
canonical LGBT. She might yep. be bi. I was gonna say, was it yeah. confirmed gay or queer character or? Uh, she's in love with Blake. Uh, okay. You know, whatever she wants to identify as, she is in love with Blake. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and that is canon at this point. However, I want to pose it to the panel uh, as a t as a matter of discussion. Is this potentially problematic because she is in an antagonist role? Um, I'm going to go with, it really depends on how you look at it. Because on one hand, queer people are people. Them being queer is not the be-all and end-all. And it should not be the be-all and end-all of a queer character. Because if you have a queer character and their main characteristic is, I'm queer! That is extremely one-dimensional. So the fact that we know all of this about Ilya, and she's a full-fledged character, and she's also LGBT, great. Awesome. And <laughs> I'm fine with the fact that she is an antagonist right now, because there's also the problem of, oh, well, this is your only queer character so far. They have to be perfect. That's not how people work. And I doubt that she's our only one, She's just our first canonical named one. Agreed. I don't think mm -hmm. she's the bumblebee all in all. Stacy. Hey! Sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, where, 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 where. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I'm so happy. Uh, <laughs> you said it, not me. Are you, you made sure the about that? Are you sure about Pretty that? Sure, that the words "bumblebee" came out of your <laughs> mouth. Hey, yeah. yeah. And I do have to say, your tact of saying "however" instead of "but." Don't think I didn't notice. That was good. Sorry, Girl, Stacey. Just continue. Made it work. <laughs> Please continue. So, I mean, I've been thrilled to see more representation throughout this season, and so this was not an entirely unexpected reveal, uh, but you know, a welcome one in most ways, just as far as getting representation out there. And I am really interested. So far, what they've done with her character has been pretty solid. I mean, they've definitely treated her as a fully fledged person. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I think that this revelation complicates things um, in that the way they presented it, uh, just because we have already had kind of her backstory and why she's so angry and why all of this is going on. And now you're adding this other layer of, oh, there's also this personal, like this, I, guess, I mean, it's personal, personal. Yeah, it's personal to begin with, but then there's this, this extra kind of layer of personal. So I'm curious to see where we go with that and how that gets kind of tangled together and worked out. Mark? Uh... I, I agree. I'm happy that it's not just, I'm here, I'm queer, y'all gonna die. It's, it's more of a... Not that there's anything wrong with that. that. I, think, I think I need that on a shirt. That's, that's gonna be the new marching orders for the White Fang, is I'm here, I'm queer, y'all gonna, gonna die. die. Y'all gonna die. Um, <laughs> and the but, panel screeches to a halt. That's all I got. Good I don't even. If I don't I've been, see a sign like at the next women's march on January twentieth, if I don't see a sign that says I'm here, I'm queer, and you're all gonna die, I will be so disappointed. Uh, to which Malachroma <laughs> in the chat responds, "How do you find out about my catchphrase?" Right. <laughs> Good advertising. Um, I, I agree. Like, um, it's it's two places. I think they're riding the line with it well enough to where we learned about this character with a will they won't they are they just good friends do good friends uh pledge their life to each other and just to be good friends forever that's a comment for a different thing but um it, it's sort of a thing where we learned about this character and we started caring about this character beforehand un until until today where we where we <laughs> learned the full extent of all of it and then also there has been this stigma of making the magical gay character of oh here's here's we're trying not to upset a community so we need to, like Katie said we need to make them perfect and when we don't get that with Ilya she is far from perfect sorry fandom for those of you who think that she's perfect but it that everybody's perfect uh, but <laughs> that's I I think they're writing the line just well enough but there's a couple of things seeping through on either side. Yeah. Again, if she's the only one that we ever get ever in the entire series, that's a problem for more than one reason. But again, I, mean, I, I don't think she's our only. I just think she's our first reveal. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I know we're not going to be getting any Cardin in some in, in a while, but anyway. <laughs> I I will say that like I representation matters. 
full stop. It absolutely does. Anybody who wants to say it doesn't, I'm sorry. There's lots of evidence to the contrary. Um, I think that her reveal, as you said, it could very well be problematic if she's just a villain and that's all there is to her. But I have a lot of faith in these writers and what they're capable of and the overall quality of this show and the type of product they want to give to their audience and their community who have been clamoring for representation and we've seen Rooster Teeth as a whole become more and more inclusive as the company has evolved in terms of its representation in its other shows as well. I'm particularly thinking about Red vs. Blue which during season 14 also had its first canonical lesbian character which I I mean there's been a canonical gay character and it's in season one. (laughs) This is true. <laughs> that wasn't He's a caricature. Also, that wasn't a caricature. Yeah, but Donut is weird when it comes we're, to representation. We're talking about this show, though. And yeah. I feel like looking at Elia, she could very well fall into a number of potentially problematic tropes, mm-hmm. but I feel like they're skilled enough writers to completely avoid it. Yeah, they're not They're not heavily walking. It's more of a lightish tread. Yeah, mm-hmm. and to be, to be fair, with the not number of right. tropes that are out there, there, it's hard not to tread your feet into some tropes that may or may not be problematic. I will say, though, as as I'm 100% okay with her being an antagonist character who also happens to be a member of the LGBT community, because I've always felt she was a super complex character going into that, and she checks off a lot of my boxes for, ooh, this is the exact type of antagonist that I like. What I do have a problem with <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh guessing the God. chat had something magical. Uh, the ship that name of Blake and Ilya is Reading Rainbow. <laughs> that is yep. the Go best away. ship name, I think, I'm ever. I, I almost have to ship it now because of the ship. That, like, that is just glorious. Reading Rainbow. I need a minute. Oh. <laughs> So, so good. My, my only concern oh. is if this ends up falling into, because we have an inevitable showdown between her and Blake, what I'm concerned about is this falling into the trope of bury your gay. I don't want them to introduce her as an LGBT, an LGBT character and then kill her off mm. in an inevitable standoff, because that's what a lot of other shows do, and I feel like the show is better than that. I mean, Admittedly, they have... like Kill Your Gaze also tends to lean more on, oh, this is a story about romance. They're both going to die by the end of it. Like, it, it tends to be a little more for that. But yeah, no, I absolutely get what you're saying. Yeah, I think they have more than a the hundred chance to. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know what you're talking snap. about. Um, I've <laughs> I've been on the other side of a conversation from somebody who is just not happy about how they handle that stuff. But um, it, I think the way that we've been given Illy's character. It, she's not going to fall, be, I, I think, because of uh, of, of being a, a queer character. But we know the type of choices that she is making. And we're, get, we're getting to know the... We got to know... Again, we got to know the person before we knew... Before we knew her orientation. That sort of yeah. a thing. So mm-hmm. it's ultimately... It's going to be her choices that, that, uh, that decide that. And I don't... It may be a tragic way. It may not just be a like, oh, I'm never mind. Um, <laughs> you know, ultimately dead. But no. What I what I worry about is uh, I feel like she probably has a redemption arc in her future. Watch two episodes from now, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, go either way. But I feel like what she could do Oops. for a couple seasons is go down the Adam Torres route and become just as angry and destructive as he is. Um, I do want to ask, though, you know, we had this conversation in previous episodes with Blake giving one-word descriptions of all of her friends. What word do you think describes Ilya? Jealousy at this point. Knowing what we know about her now. Jealousy at this point. Hurricane. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to, because, I mean, I feel like... Ever, especially ever since Blake has known, there's always been anger swirling around. So Hurricane is really. And there are a couple of moments like of, of calm in the middle, but you don't know if it's the end or just getting started. A storm, yeah. yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's a good that's a good one. All right, 
do we have any other thoughts on Lady Ilya? Because we, we also do have, you know, some other things to talk about in this episode. Sam Green says envy. Ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a good, a good one. one. Mm-hmm. Malachroma says but, resentment. Resentment is good. See, the like only resentment. problem I have with envy is she's really only expressed jealousy in a very specific case. There, you know, about Blake's feelings for Adam when when her normal or not normal friends, but when her friends who were not Faunus at school kind of revealed their true colors and she got tired of hiding who she was. There was no envy. She didn't want to be like them. At a, like, she never really expressed that she wanted to be like them. She I f- wanted to fit in. I feel like resentment's That's a different. good one. Mm-hmm. That's true. She didn't I, need to like them to fit in. This is true. I feel like resentment is a really good one, but I feel like if we asked Elia, the word would be retribution. Mm. So, on that, yeah. let's... let's I also, but I also think that envy could be a team name because that is associated with the color green. <laughs> And it could be E N V I, an I for Ilya. We just need the other three. Uh, anyway. So, uh, the only other thing I want to talk about with this episode is Blake and Son and how much their relationship has grown. Because yes. we see when she initially gets the note from Ilya, she goes and doesn't discuss the matter with, with Son. I like that we get this turn where it turns out, no, she did fill him in and completely trusted him to have her back. Mm. That says a lot about how much their relationship has changed and how much she has grown as a person. Yeah, when, when mm-hmm. we were first watching it, we were making all sorts of my favorite murder jokes about, no, don't go there alone, this is a horror movie. Like, why would you do this? Why would you go out and meet someone whom you know is dangerous, completely alone, without telling anyone? Are you serious? Oh, no, she had backup the whole time. Yes! So glad they did not fall into that trope. Everyone is smarter than that. Do mm. we think that spells doom for Sun, though? I mean, no. I... Sorry. <laughs> sorry, for, sorry for talking over. No, no, okay. you're fine. I just I, said, no. This, okay. this was to the table. Okay, well, I, I mean, I still sort of stand by, someone I'm going to die. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> or son one. It's so bold, yeah, son one. How that? dare you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it would be bold if it was son, but it, I don't, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I guess we're going to have to watch next week's public <laughs> episode to find out. <laughs> Although what way back in the chat, and I, this was like towards the beginning of the episode, so I don't think I can pull it up, uh, someone made a comment about how losing someone at this stage of the game could be detrimental to Blake's development. Because she went back and now she's fighting back and she's trying to do the right thing, and then it, losing her someone anyway would be, well, no matter what I do, I'm going to lose people, so why bother? Or, But so, that's the thing, is if we're expecting her to make that turn, she doesn't. And she go and she moves forward through it. Like that's the thing that goes. I I have to fight even harder. I I need to go back and be with my team because uh, somebody else is going to be in my shoes, losing somebody that they care about up at Haven. I need to go. We need to go. Son, let's roll. Oh well, no, you're dead. Sorry. <laughs> Rip salt in that wound. Jeez. <laughs> Stacy, what do you think? <laughs> I feel like that could go either way. Because, yeah, I think at this point, uh, how we've seen her react to bad things happening to people she cares about, she's very skittish still and very untrusting. Taking that step and trusting Sun with this information, it's a huge step for her. And I don't know how far we can stumble backwards so soon right now. So if something were to happen to Sun or to her family... I honestly think it's a toss-up which way she goes with that. All right. We'll talk about that a little bit more in, um, should we, how do we want to do this? Do we want to talk official predictions and then talk about some Christmas joy? Or do we want to talk about Christmas joy and then end off in predictions? I mean, Let's do quick predictions. Keep it on topic. Yeah, it's super, don't do the quick, short predictions thing if you need it. Yeah. All right. After Buzz TV <coughs> predictions. And the quick Sweet. flashing. Okay. <laughs> Who's going to die? If somebody's going to die, who do we think it is? My money's on Gira. Uh, oh my god, Grant Harriman in chat says, Elia can turn her hair red, so she's going to die. Oh, no! <laughs> well, that's done. That's or she, You can't argue with that. If she, if she gets stabbed, the only thing that changes is, is her hair color turns to red, and you go, damn it, we knew it! No! We knew it! <laughs> Oh no! Well, I'm oh. I'm gonna stick with that then. You can't argue with that. Part time redhead. <laughs> oh jeez. That's a good Mark, name. Mark. 
Um, I would like to say the two uh, two members of the White Fang, Fennec and the other Corsac. 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 Yeah. yeah, Corsac. Yeah. Uh, I, again, oh, absolutely. Justice would be nice. Um, okay, let's go ahead and uh, that wraps it up for Ruby. So we're going to talk really quick about this Christmas uh, special for Camp Camp because we are Rooster Teeth Reviews. Um, if you haven't watched it already, please It's public. Pause, it's pause. public, so you can watch it. You can yeah. absolutely do that. Pause this, go watch it, and then come back here. Um, guys, Christmas joy has come to Camp Camp through the magic of global warming. We're... <laughs> I just love the, the nice little snowflake, like it's gonna be how the Grinch stole Christmas, and then it lands, and the reaction is just, what the fuck? Yeah. In the it, middle I... of summer? That That's that the being the promo that they released is like, oh, I'm like my my wife and I were both talking. We miss camp camp on a weekly basis. Yeah. The what? But when we were when we were getting drops every week, it was it's so lovely because it's refreshing. It's it's kind of a wake up call. Uh, and f- this episode especially is definitely now in a rotation of Christmas specials to watch every year. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Nikki got a wonderful song where she can't oh, figure out what Christmas means to her. Elizabeth Maxwell killed oh, she this nailed it. musical number. Oh, it Singing was Singing in delightful. character voices is hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is just amazing. Elizabeth, you are extremely talented. So bravo. Bravo, madame. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to say that one of my favorite bits was just the Christmas story reference. <laughs> You'll shoot your oh, eye out. Afraid, afraid he'll shoot his eye out? Oh no, these are for me. <laughs> just the look. I, I think it's super sweet uh, to see the type of gift that David wants to give Max because it would make him happy even at the potential cost of his own safety. His life. <laughs> right. He knows, he knows how now. to protect himself a little better now. Yeah. He's ready for it this time. <laughs> um, I, Hold on, we, we got to for... clap back in chat. Honestly, Camp Camp, greater than Ruby at this point. Whoa! Disagree. Whoa. They're two completely different types of They <laughs> are, so it's That's, hard yeah, to describe. Yeah, I don't watch them You're with the same. You're just sitting there going, but I like v- vanilla is better than chocolate. You're entitled to your opinion. There's not really a better than. There are two very different Ruby's, flavors. Ruby's uh, a high fantasy show. Uh, and oh, and Camp Camp, Camp, Camp isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk really quick about the magical moment in this episode? Which? Someone help no. Harrison! <laughs> help the poor child! Dude. The horrifying <laughs> magic in his hands! Take that Shh. off! Shout out to uh, Achievement Hunter Jeremy Dooley for providing the voice of the snowman, who has one of my favorite screaming voices in the company. I and like before, like as he was putting on, I was like, knowing Harrison, knowing his parents, knowing his backstory, that snowman's gonna want it, want to oh. die oh. immediately. And right. Kill me. And yet. The I the magic moment that I that I was uh, that I thought you were referring to was Space Kid. And oh, oil. that was so sweet. Oh, super the sweet. little and snow globe that straight up warmed my icy cold dead heart. Like that, it was so. It's pretty dead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you the there? But Go no, ahead. like it was just this beautiful, sincere, heartfelt moment that was completely stripped of irony or sarcasm. You know, one character to another, and it was very, very sweet. Mm. And the moral of that's what I enjoy about Christmas, and it doesn't have to be Christmas in order for you to be able to do that. Like that was a good moral. So was the PSA after it. Oh, man. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Vaccinate your fucking kids. I just want a clip Thank of that. Thank you. And I'm just, yeah. I need that everywhere. <laughs> I do. I, I, need, your kids I need that I need that whole thing about climate change and also vaccination taken out so I can just kind of throw it at people whenever the conversation We can do it now on YouTube. Up. Just pull it off of YouTube, take that part and throw it, but they should just pull it out themselves. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to be able to link the official Rooster Teeth video. Yeah. Um, just for legitimacy. So sake. we are running short on time. Final <laughs> thoughts. I mean, Almost. this this is the last Camp Camp episode until season three, uh, even though we know that they haven't been picked. We don't know if they've been picked up yet. Shh. Let's be real. Uh, Shut your mouth. Don't even. Oh, don't give me don't a, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I am. I time to go back and watch all two seasons again. I love this show so much. I really, yeah. It's one of the best things Mark has ever introduced me to, and now I'm like <laughs> obsessively thinking about Camp Camp. I did not expect that. It's 
Wonderful. And this, yeah, this was super heartwarming. And we were blessed because to see Max like actually smile in both of the specials mm. that we have gotten yeah. this time. This is true. Just the Paris Day joke made me very happy. <laughs> I keep getting those mixed up. <laughs> Great. That was delightful. Um, for, for me, I, it all goes back to that moral of like the holidays are an excellent time of the year to be kind, but you don't have to wait for the holidays to be kind. So go out there and do better. Do better. <laughs> you have to do better. <laughs> Go out there and be great because that's any time of year. Yeah. And All also right. vaccinate your kids and your pets. <laughs> and global warming's real. Okay, <laughs> guys. Takeaways. <laughs> that does it for this week's episode. Katie Cullen, where can people go if they want to find you? You can follow me all over the social medias as well as on YouTube and Twitch at Kiaje. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. If you would like to see Megan's and my reaction to uh, these episodes that we've been talking about, those are all on that YouTube channel. Guys, I'm Stacey Shuttle with you. can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, everywhere on the social media at Stacey Shuttles. And you can find me on Twitter at Mark Budonica. Uh, do a lot of stuff. In general, uh, Stacey and I are a part of a, a group called Inventory Full. We're on Twitch. Uh, not next week, but the week after, since we're going to be off, we're, we're working on doing the second half of Ruby Grim Eclipse. So if you want to watch part one, head to twitch.tv slash inventory full PT. Uh, it's in the VOD section, or the highlights section, excuse me. Uh, take a look. It's in a book. Hashtag, <laughs> reading, reading, rainbow. Hashtag reading rainbow. And also, if <laughs> anybody wants to throw uh, Tuxedo Mark art in the hashtag, I don't <gasps> mind. Uh, please, please do that, guys. That I would need be it. the best. I don't have a need it. <laughs> All of us is a magical girl team. Need uh, it. Yeah. Please, 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 please. Um, if you, <laughs> if you guys uh, want to follow Patrick, you can follow him at P to the D's on Twitter. And I'm Megan. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. Just check out my Twitter for all the stuff. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Happy holidays. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Dust, you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.